Thank you. Thank you. And uh, welcome, welcome everyone. We are uh, absolutely delighted to be hosting all of our AIHN researchers here for AI Research Week. Uh, you're probably aware we've expanded, uh, you know, how we do this. In addition to the colloquium that we normally do in our Yorktown lab, uh, we'll also be doing the uh, poster session, which is an enlarged format. Uh, you'll see 70, probably 80 uh, posters there. We have the open house tonight at IBM uh, Research in Cambridge, just a couple of blocks away. We'll walk over there after the poster session. And then we have the entire week of you know, technical workshops and meetings and so on to help us uh, to, to hopefully advance our research agenda as we're going. But it was especially important for us to start this entire week with a gathering of our AIHN university collaborators. So our closest collaborators here having sort of a, a more of an internal uh, close-knit uh, meeting uh, to talk about uh, the research. And then we'll go out and as I said, tomorrow we open it up for the colloquium for a greater part of the public and, and so on. So, uh, so thank you uh, and, and you're very, very welcome. So with that, we'll, we'll get started. Um, since we do have some new members this year, I just wanted to uh, maybe reintroduce uh, a little bit about IBM Research. Uh, as you're sure you're aware, IBM Research takes uh, its responsibility, its research focus uh, very seriously. Um, our research is, is recognized uh, worldwide. We have 3,000 researchers in six continents in 13 labs. Um, about 1,000, one-third of those are focused on AI, so core AI algorithms uh, and driving AI into industries in transformative ways. Uh, this, this quote here in terms of 9,000 patents in 2017, uh, roughly 1,500 of those alone were in AI. So AI is obviously core uh, to, to what we do in, in IBM research, and that's because we see AI as something that will transform all of our products from our cloud platform to the services we offer to the solutions for industries. Uh, we see that as, as transforming um, all of that work. So it's critical for us and as part of that we are expanding our, our, AH, our Horizons uh, network. And I'll talk about that in a, in a moment. So this is a, you know, just to show you, right? So we've actually uh, just this year alone, we've expanded. There are two new members uh, that are here with us today. Um, the UMass at Amherst is a new program that we've started with Andrew McCollum, uh, focused on information extraction and representation uh, for essentially being able to create you know, learned representations for more advanced forms of, of reasoning. And Andrew will talk about his research um, in a few moments. We also have a new member as we start to expand globally. So our first, uh, or our second actually, we also have the University of Montreal in, in Canada, but our first uh, addition to that is uh, IIT Bombay. And here again, what we're focusing it is on uh, knowledge representation, uh, information extraction, reasoning, uh, better training for our AI systems uh, in terms of uh, dialogue and conversation and, and so on. And if we look at you know, kind of overall, this, you know, this, this landscape of, of research that we have, what you'll see is that it's fantastic in terms of both being able to advance the core AI algorithms as well as how we transform, you know, industries with, with leading edge applications of, of AI to those. So uh, with UMBC, we're focused on AI for cybersecurity. Uh, with MIT, we're focused on core AI algorithms as well as two very important industries, healthcare life sciences and cybersecurity. And now this year we've just started to expand into, into finance as well. Uh, with Michigan, we focus on uh, conversational systems, dialogue, especially goal-oriented uh, dialogue or AI systems for goal-oriented dialogue. With the University of Montreal, it's, it's all about deep learning. Uh, with RPI, we focus on a cognitive, immersive environment um, that can learn and adapt and interact with humans in a very fluid way, uh, as well as our HEALS program, which is about healthcare effectiveness and, and improving that through knowledge representation and reasoning. At UCSD, you're going to hear Rob talk a little bit later, but we have two main thrusts there. 
One is the, the microbiome. And in addition to that, we're doing work in terms of how AI can help with healthy aging, with enabling people to be able to use the system so that they can age in place, you know, in their homes, you know, in their environment, and, and hopefully lead very, continue to lead very productive lives as they do that. And then we also have the University of Illinois. So with the University of Illinois, UIUC, our work is focused on um, high performance systems, optimization of those systems for AI and machine learning, as well as uh, some work in computational creativity and, uh, and interaction systems as well. Okay, so I also wanted to make sure that we celebrate some of your work. Uh, the team, AIHN, has had really a fantastic year this year. We're up to about uh, 130 students, about 90 uh, faculty, uh, 120 uh, publications uh, this year uh, over, the, over the course there. Um, and what we're especially excited about is that what we're seeing more and more is that the publications are collaborative between IBM researchers and between the researchers in the, in the university. So uh, the, the UIUC team has been uh, especially busy uh, this year. Uh, so one example is their DNN Builder tool, which is a, which is a poster that you can see at the poster session. Uh, one, uh, the, best, uh, the best paper award at the automation design uh, conference uh, in the front end category, really focused on you know, AI accelerators for, for systems, for people who are building and, and accelerating systems. Uh, just really quickly, is anyone here from uh, the DNN Builder team? Just uh, take a look here. There we go. Excellent, thanks. Also, uh, in CVPR, there was a competition in terms of look into person. So being able to actually understand semantic parts of, of humans and doing parsing of, of that. And uh, the UIUC team uh, placed first in all three of those human parsing uh, tasks. So fantastic job for the UIUC team. Go ahead if you're, if you're here, uh, just, uh, raise your hand as well. <laughs> excellent, excellent job. So within that, they also won the, uh, the, the system design uh, competition uh, for the you know, automated uh, design, for automated cognitive uh, design as well. Um, next, <laughs> so we will at some point move on from, from, uh, from UIUC, but uh, uh, it, additionally, uh, they've won the, uh, the best paper, uh, they are a finalist for the best paper award uh, for microarchitecture uh, 52 for their work in terms of you know, near memory uh, processing architecture for, uh, for the memory network channel. So well done. Are you here? There we go. OK, excellent. Thank you. And they find their results in October. So just a couple of weeks, you'll get, you'll get the final results. OK, additionally, so uh, in terms of a new, uh, you know, our new collaboration, uh, collaboration with UMass is already uh, yielding best paper award. Uh, this is a very interesting piece of work in that uh, there was a data set that was released uh, to especially try to target advances in question answering that would require going beyond uh, information retrieval and PMI types of techniques. Uh, and this team um, you know, received a best paper award for that work. So as UMass team here, let's uh, recognize them. I, saw, I know I saw Andrew earlier. So. Ah, he's gearing for his talk. Okay, let's uh, let's give a hand to uh, to the UMass. Okay. Additionally, uh, the moments in time. Uh, so this is a data set, uh, essentially a one million video data set. I think they're up to around two million labels uh, for that video set. So the most labels of of any video data set. It's really focused on trying to go beyond object recognition into action recognition from videos. So what the team has done is they've used their AI, uh, machine learning, machine vision uh, capabilities to you know, amass this huge data set, uh, to do it in a way that the labeling, much of the labeling could be automated, it could be augmented by humans, uh, more doing you know, decisions based off of that as opposed to having to do the full brunt of, of annotation for that. So, uh, not only did they release the data set uh, in 2017 as part of NIPS, uh, but they've also gone back and they've issued their first challenge at CVPR, 
the CVPR challenge uh, was the most participated uh, challenge at CVPR. Uh, I think it was 120 diff 123 different teams, 150 uh, submissions. So really a great success in terms of this. Uh, so do we have our team here? Let's give them, let's give them a hand. I think Ode is also. I think, I think Ode is also in the in the back uh, preparing for for her talk. Okay. Uh, now, in terms of Michigan, uh, so what we, the work that's been doing there is basically to say that uh, we need uh, better data and well-defined tasks that will help us to advance in uh, goal-oriented uh, dialogue. So the combined team has uh, created a data set of over 80,000 uh, conversations. Uh, they released that along with tasks for DSTC 7, uh, which has, is a program with multiple different tasks. Uh, and as part of that, people are already starting to, to work on it. Uh, as part of that, they've proposed a workshop at AAAI that's been accepted. And then they'll be able to show the results and have interactions on, on those as well. So, uh, so well done to the, uh, to the Michigan team. Or did you raise your hand? Or you got some here? Let's, let's give them a hand. OK. So now what I'd like to do is uh, shift a little bit and, and start looking ahead, right? Uh, one of the things that we really want to do this year, uh, now that we've, you know, we've, we've really got uh, a very strong partnership, a very strong set of universities that we're working with, collaborations that are starting to really you know, both yield fruit and new ones that are, that are emerging and coming up, uh, we want to make the program better uh, for you, for everyone. Um, uh, so we think uh, that in terms of doing that, that some of the things that we can do to make uh, the collaborations better to help with your research. Uh, one is to, to have tighter collaborations with IBM researchers, right? So as an example, uh, one program that we've been working on crafting is, a, is an in-residence program. So uh, while we all do you know, internships over the summer and so on, we believe that you know, the research is happening, obviously, you know, during the semester as well. So uh, we're looking at creating programs so that, the, uh, so that you uh, you know, researchers, our researchers with their, their faculty uh, can come to our research lab, spend some real time, you know, working. So we, we think it's great in terms of when uh, researchers come across and, and do seminars and talks and so on. But we think expanding upon that so that uh, people can spend time actually working side by side, you know, fleshing out their plans, you know, drawing on the whiteboards, uh, you know, continuing to work together. Is, uh, will be huge in terms of helping us to advance. So we're looking at some in-residence programs, um, and we'll be talking more about those uh, soon. Um, and then finally, we'll start a regular webcast program. So uh, roughly you know, every four to six weeks, uh, we'll have a webcast that will invite all of our you know, researchers who are part of any of our AIHN projects uh, to participate. And we'll do a combination of, of things on these webcasts, right? In some cases, it may be uh, you know, tutorials, uh, maybe on some of the tools that one of the labs are creating so that other people can use them. Um, and in other cases, research seminars just to, to disseminate uh, results from the, the projects and get others in, involved. Our first, we thought it might be useful as our first one to, to give a tutorial on our AI cloud platform. So our cloud platform, uh, if you're from, uh, in, in case you're not familiar with it, uh, we've released our deep learning as a service uh, technology that allows one to uh, uh, create, uh, you know, their 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 networks, their architecture, uh, and then be able to push that onto our cloud platform, uh, get access, efficient access to the GPUs, have that load balanced, and uh, and then results uh, coming back, and and make it easier to to manage those results with what we refer to as a uh, uh, an experiment assistant. Um, so as part of, uh, again, trying to you know, help with the research, uh, what we'll do is to provide a tutorial. Uh, the tutorial is not to teach people how to, uh, to do machine learning or deep learning. It's a tutorial really to just so that you can understand how to get onto our cloud, how to use the resources there, how to take advantage of deep learning as a service, and so on. So we'll do our first one there. Uh, the teacher will be uh, here, actually, as part of the open house. So uh, Herman is, is out in there. There's Herman. He's out in the audience. He'll be at the open house. He'll be around the poster session. Uh, and then we'll, so you're, you're welcome to, to ask him any questions during that time. Otherwise, we will, uh, you know, we'll, we'll start with this, uh, this tutorial. OK, so now. One of the things that we're doing also that's, uh, that's new and different is that we, uh, you guys are kind of like 
packed in here. <laughs> and so being able to ask questions by having people get up and walk across the room may be a little bit difficult. And we thought uh, we could actually use uh, some technology uh, to do that. So we've set up an app, um, Slido, uh, that hopefully you've already seen as part of the registration. And uh, let me see here. That's, um, so there we go. OK, great. Um, so what happens is uh, you, you simply go to this, uh, to this URL. You can join there. Um, you fill out a very short survey. It's pretty easy to do. If you haven't already do it, I'd welcome you to do that because we're going to be using this throughout the whole week. Oh, well, OK, thanks. <laughs> OK, so we'll be using this uh, throughout the week. So if you haven't already, take a few minutes and uh, please sign in. We'll use it for two things, right? So one of the things that we'll use is that if we want to take a poll of the audience, and I have a couple of questions uh, specifically on how we can improve the program that are out there uh, that I'll ask you in a moment. Uh, and then I also uh, will also use it for questions, right? So uh, if you'd like, the, the way that it works is that you can ask a question. Others in the audience can kind of upvote it, and then we'll take the top questions, and we'll use that for the, uh, for the panelists. So we have a couple of panel additional talks here. So I definitely encourage you to, uh, to go ahead and get set up if you haven't already done that. So let's go to the, uh, to the first uh, survey, uh, first poll uh, question. OK. So great. It looks like people are already uh, getting started on this. So the first thing is uh, to better understand uh, you know, research areas and interests that you are most interested in. And I would really encourage you to uh, both uh, you know, provide kind of the, the higher level uh, areas, so you know, NLP or reinforcement learning or, or these things, but also to be you know, more specific uh, in terms of research areas that, that interest you as, as well. So, uh, I can see that this is uh, this is growing up, and uh, not surprising there, <laughs> we're seeing a lot uh, uh, around learning. So that's that's fantastic. I think while we while we let that uh, continue to accumulate, please you know please keep uh, you know putting in in your answers. Uh, we can come back to it in a moment. I'll go ahead and seed with the additional question uh, that I wanted to to ask people. So if we can uh, kind of go back there, okay. Fabulous. OK, so uh, the thing that we want to do is we think that you know, we've learned actually a little bit from this, uh, the fact that we've established this MIT IBM lab here you know, in close proximity with MIT, researchers going back and forth across the labs, working in each other's environments. And that has really helped a lot. And so uh, we're looking at expanding the way we do residencies you know, in the IBM research lab. So we've always done you know, uh, you know, internships over the summer. But we think that during the semester, actually having researchers come in, like I said, not just for a, for a day, but potentially for uh, a week or two weeks, three weeks, uh, or even an academic, you know, a full academic semester uh, would be very useful. Obviously not all of the, you know, all of the years of one's uh, PhD, but uh, there are key periods where we think that that you know, much deeper interaction, the ability to really work together you know, side by side, shoulder to shoulder on the research uh, could be valuable. Uh, and it's certainly valuable uh, for us as, as well. Uh, the difference, obviously, here is that during a summer internship, usually people come in and they, they work on projects that are assigned by the, by the IBM Research Lab in terms of priorities for, for projects. In this residency program, we really be looking at, for the research that you're already doing as part of your AIHN program and project, it's more about just continuing to do that research, but doing it you know, you know, side by side with the researchers that you are working with. So your, your PIs and your leads and your, you know, your co-researchers on the, the projects. So OK, so uh, let's just take a, we can take a quick look at the, uh, the results here, because they're starting to, to come in. OK, so not, uh, not surprising here in terms of you know, learning, deep learning, uh, quite a bit on healthcare and NLP, microbiome, reinforcement, and so on. Uh, so this is uh, this is excellent. I think that um, you know we can you know we'll keep this open and going for a while. And so if you have other ideas, please continue to do this. Uh, we'll also you know find other ways to to get information on on what you're interested in in terms of your research areas. Uh, so maybe we go to the to the next one as well. Oh, I'm sorry. the The next question. I was just going to take a quick look and how it came out in terms of the uh, the timing there. So. OK, so it's roughly 61 uh, for this full semester. That's fantastic. Actually, this, is, uh, this fits very well with what we were thinking would be, would be valuable uh, for people. So, so thanks very much uh, for doing that. OK, um, 
Now, any, any questions? Uh, can we just uh, take a look? Are there any questions here, Mark, that have uh, come up as part of this or not? Ah. So, okay, this is <laughs> good. <laughs> All right, uh, is the residency program uh, just for students or also IBMers and how about faculty? Yes, so we think that uh, definitely in addition to students having faculty come in as well for residency programs uh, would be very good. Uh, it turns out I was talking to Andrew just before we got started and he mentioned the importance of our researchers also spending time in, in universities. So we'll, we'll be looking at how we do that as, as well. So very timely uh, comment from, from Andrew as well. Uh, more international expansion this year. Yes, uh, we are working on, uh, those are actually you know, in work as we speak. Uh, there are a couple more that we've been working on. So uh, what we've started in addition to you know, the regular programs uh, we are starting to, uh, you know, have call for proposals for additional uh, programs. Uh, we'll get you more information on that. For now, uh, you know, we are focused on uh, expanding internationally. We think that's a, a very important part of our, uh, our agenda here because, as you're aware, you know, we have 13 labs. We're, you know, we're on six different continents. And this, you know, collaborative research, uh, you know, for the purposes of advancing AI is critical to us. So. Uh, making sure that we have additional international and, and global labs is, is a key part of the, the program. Okay, great. So we'll, uh, you'll have other chances to, to ask questions as we progress, uh, but I think we're, we're fine for this. So we'll switch back uh, to, the, to the program here, and I'd like to introduce our, our first keynote speaker. Uh, so if we can go ahead. Oh, actually, one, yeah, can we just advance? Uh, there we go. Okay, all right. So uh, for the rest of, of this session, uh, we have two keynote talks, uh, AI and the human micro microbiome is the first one. Uh, and then we'll go to AI for, for representation and reasoning. And then what we wanted to do is because we feel that you know, the emphasis, you know, the, the, the strategy here is really about driving up the collaboration, uh, there are a few projects that have created assets that we think will be fantastic for helping collaboration not only between the researchers in the university, but also collaborations across the different universities. So we've selected a couple of those uh, projects uh, as, as collaboration opportunities that we would like to uh, make everyone aware of. Uh, and then hopefully that will, that will help in terms of, of seeding those collaborations. Uh, these are short talks. They're meant to sort of uh, you know, seed the discussion and what we're planning uh, is that you know, as part of that, uh, the, you know, the seminars, the regular seminars that we'll be holding, uh, we'll ask the speakers if they can come back and, and do a more expanded version to help people actually really get started with, with some of these tools and, and technologies and so on. And then last, what we have is uh, an inside peek at uh, IBM's AI strategy. So this is uh, hopefully uh, you know, somewhat of a, a unique uh, you know, session for you. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about it so that you can be thinking about the kinds of questions uh, that you want to ask. We thought it would be you know, especially interesting if you were able to ask you know, our leads for our core programs, you know, AI science, AI tech, AI engineering, if you were to ask them uh, anything, right? So, Literally think of it as, as an ask me anything. Um, and we will be as open as we possibly can about you know, what we're doing today, uh, why we're doing it, you know, what we see in the future, how you might be able to help with this. So take it literally. Uh, we, they, they, uh, the panelists have signed up for an ask me anything uh, session. So, uh, so please, please be ready and we'll use this same system that we were already using in terms of asking the, uh, the questions. Okay, so for our first talk, uh, we have Rob Knight, who is the, uh, the founding director for the Center for Microbiome Innovation. He's also the professor for pediatrics uh, and computer science at uh, UC San Diego. Uh, I think that uh, uh, Rob also wins the award uh, for cool project names. So in addition to uh, the Earth Microbiome, uh, he is also the lead for the American Gut project, which I, which I thought was just fabulous in terms of putting it, uh, it right out there. And it's also fabulous in terms of the, the project, right? So if you, if you look at this, right? So what's the connection between the human bi biome and AI? Why was it so important for us to have this collaboration? Uh, well, Rob's team is focused on 
you know, the software, the tools, and the technologies, and the, the approaches that will enable very high volume, uh, you, know, uh, you know, analysis of all this data. To give you, uh, to give you an indication, uh, in the Earth Microbiome Project, there's already uh, roughly uh, 20,000, or 27,000 uh, samples that they've collected um, and posted, about 100,000 that they've collected in addition to that, and well over 2 billion uh, DNA sequences from that. So the tools that they need uh, from AI and machine learning in order to be able to identify and match and try to find their way across that space is, is critical.